Yeah, so uh, good morning. We need to start the class. Uh, there is a question we were supposed to, to handle today on uh, IFRS 9. Can someone remind me of that question kindly? Can someone remind me of that question? It's a question we were supposed to check today. December 2021, question 3B. Thank you. Please, let's all be there. December 2021, question 3B. Graph 3B, not 5B. November 2019. November 2019, I think that one maybe. What was there something like November 2019, really? Graph Gio Nigami. Eh? Billy. There? Billy. There were two references. Hey, even November 2019, you don't go to. No. November 2019, now that the fat tax, can November 2019 was about the fat tax. Which, oh, I'm all last class. Uh, I think we a weekend. Maybe that is why. To be manager, you to be manager to counter financial instruments. Okay. So we were supposed to solve this question on financial instrument. It's a very unique question. Uh, December twenty twenty one. For those of you who have checked, you can confirm. And I cannot wind up that topic without checking this topic, uh, this question. Uh, uh, December 2021, question 3B. I'm there already. Or someone can tell us the page for someone struggling. Me, yeah, I've already gotten the question, but my paper is still not compatible with yours. Whoever's gotten it, you can just tell me the page so that those who will be joining after we have started will not be asking. Which page is that? Page 43, Brian. Uh, so allow me to read the question. Allow me to read the question. It says, it says, on 1st of July, on 1st July, 2021, Blanket Limited purchased a debt instrument, 5% bond, purchased 5% bond with a nominal value of shillings 2.5 million. Okay. The purchase consideration was shillings 23,75,000, and the company incurred shillings 50,000 transaction costs. The bond will be redeemed at a premium of shillings 149,000 above the nominal value on 1st July 2024. Okay. The effective interest rate on the bond is 8%. So effective interest is for determining the finance cost. Blanket Limited's business model is to hold the financial assets to, co to collect the contractual cash flows, but also sell the financial asset if investment with higher returns becomes available. 
There has not been a significant increase in the credit risk since inception, except credit losses are immaterial. The fair value of the bond was as follows. So on 30th June 2022, that is the end of year one, because they purchased the bond in on 1st July 2021. So 30th June 2022, that is the end of year one. So at the end of the year one, the market value of the bond is now 27.50. The 30th June 2023, it is 2.6, 2.6. The directors of Blanket Limited are unsure of how to account for this financial instrument. They don't know how to, they don't know how to go about it. They don't know how to go about it. So maybe we are likely to tell them. Required prepare extract of the financial statement or blanket limited for the year ended 30th June 2022, 23, and 24 to show the accounting treatment of the above transaction, eight marks. So they want us to come up with P and L and balance it extract to show how to account for that, the bond for those three year period. So we have to start with amortization. What makes this question to be a little bit uh, different with the ones we have been doing is that the fair value the fair value at the end of each year keeps on changing that is what is bringing the difference you know the others we have been doing the balance carried down is the it's assumed to be the market value which is brought down again we amortize like that but in a situation whereby uh, whereby the market value uh, keeps on fluctuating then the, the amount to be amortized should be the, that market value, budget funding amortization, so that you can see. So right there, amortization schedule. Amortization schedule. Amortization schedule. So, So right here, 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 then we'll have the balance brought down. Then we'll have the finance cost. So finance cost is the effective. So effective is 8%. The 8%. Have the eight percent there. Then you bring the actual, the actual interest, which is the coupon interest, was at the rate of five percent. So, uh, interest, which is the coupon interest rate, was five percent, and the interest, interest is charged constantly on the nominal value. In which case here the nominal value is 2.5. Then you will get balance carried down. Balance carried down. But now, okay, let me squeeze some. I need two columns. So you just maintain your hands because you have a space. Me, I have to I have to do something because I need two columns here. So I'll bring here balance brought down. I will have finance cost at 8%. I will have interest, the actual the coupon, the coupon interest at 5%. I will have the balance carried down. So now, uh, ideally, it should end there. Amortization normally ends here for the bonds. But here we are having, at the end of each year, you know you will be amortizing, you will get the amortized cost at the end, which should be the gross down next year. 
But in this question, there are fair values also at the end of the year. And most likely, most likely, you will not find that the balance carried down is turning, is turning with your fair value. So you will bring here fair value, fair value. So the difference between your balance carried down and the actual market value will give you what to report. What to report in PL gain stop loss. Correct. So when you have the fair value, it's ideal to do that for amortization. So that gain stop loss is what will go to PL, this one here. So the financial year started in 2021. So 2021, July to 30th, June, 2022. So I will just say 2022 financial year. So 2022, financial year, 2023, and 2024, like that. Then interest, the coupon, the coupon interest is always constant. It doesn't change, and it is based on the nominal value. Yes, Inter. The board is not clear. Uh, on, let me try to see the lighting. Yes, Inter. Yeah, you can put the light below. You will confirm if it is somehow better. Yes, Inter, are you better somehow? Okay, so good. What are you? Let me operate without that much light. So I was saying the interest is always computed on the nominal value. And the nominal value in this case was 2.5. So what is 5% of the 2.5? It will be constant throughout. How much is that? How much, how much? One twenty five, Nancy. So we have one twenty five. So this one you subtract because that one is they purchased, so that one they will be receiving. So one twenty five, one twenty five, one twenty five. That. So have that. Then uh, they are saying, let's go back on where the question started. On 1st July, market purchased are getting to my 5% with a nominal value of 2.5. The purchase consideration was twenty three seventy five, and the company in card, the company in card, um, fifty thousand as transaction costs. You know they are the ones who purchased our small working outside there so that we can get the bond value. So bond value as a working outside, the bond value to be amortized. What you're supposed to amortize, uh, the consideration, consideration, consideration is the amount they paid. They paid an amount of 23.75. They paid 23.75, but also they incurred transaction costs. So transaction costs, you know, the purchaser is not supposed to incur, they should be incurred by the, the ones who are selling the bonds. So if the purchaser incurs transaction cost, then that transaction cost should form part of the bond value. But if it was from the seller, the seller will subtract because the interest will not be paid based on that. So you add the transaction costs. So transaction costs, they incurred 50,000. So in the books, 
in the books of the purchaser, they will be talking of five, two, four, two. That is the value of the bond in the financial statements to be amortized. But interest will always be based on the nominal value. So you add the transaction costs, but if it was in the books of the issuer, you have to subtract the transaction costs because it will go over and above the nominal, so you subtract. But for the purchaser, you add, because when you are buying the bond, uh, in your financial statement, you will say that I paid CBK 2375, lawyer, lawyer 50,000, I'm a broker. The Lipa broker 50. So to you, the total value of that bond should be the consideration you have paid plus any incremental costs. So that is what we subject to amortization. Four two five like that. So finance cost will be based on this value. So what is eight percent of twenty four twenty five? So let's do that faster, faster to this order. One ninety four thousand, one ninety four. So balance carried down that plus that minus the one twenty five. What do you get? What do you get? People are getting 20, 25, 19, number 24, 94. Joy and uh, Nancy answer stuff out. So I have to get one more person to confirm. Nancy and Joy have two different answers. So which is which? Confirm the one. So Nancy check 24, 94. So this is 24, 94. So at the end of year one, the value of the bond is 24, 94. But check the fair value. The fair value was reported by the examiner down there. The examiner reported 27, 50. 27, 50. So this is again. That is again. Because in the books, you know, amortization is done in the books, but now this is the market value. In the books, we have recorded the bond at 24.94, market value is 27.50. So that is a gain. So gain of how much? The increase is how much? The increase is how much? Twenty five, two fifty six, two fifty six. Thank you. Thank you. So that is two hundred and fifty six gained. Let's go to twenty twenty three. So twenty twenty three. Please listen to me here. Now this is where the the two natural different uh, approach. In 2023, if the examiner did not complicate these questions with the fair value and the rest, balance brought down would have been 2494. But they normally say in accounting, which is the truth, that when you have the book balance and you have uh, the market value, when they have come to check what you're saying, when you have book balance and you have the market value, then the market value becomes now the book value. That is what they normally say. But now, according to IFRS 9, amortization should always be based on the, on the closing book value, not on the market value. We don't amortize market value because they argue that market value keeps on changing. You don't, they are not using the bears and the bulls. 
there is that fluctuation in the market. So if you amortize, if you base your amortization on the fair value, it a potea. So on the amortization, that is finance cost. Finance cost will be based on the amortized cost at the end, this one here. So this is what we'll have to bring down and amortize. But um, again, accounting with the viewer that the market value supersedes the book value. So this is what will happen. You will say here balance brought down will be 2750. That is the one you bring down. When they when they struggling to, to see the board on the far right, and if you let a light time, what do we do? When they, how comes today you are struggling? Oh, but I think you may squeeze. But because I know you are moving with me, Akuna Shinaku was that when they see figures. Figures in a flow, provided the figures are flowing. 24, 25, 194. I hope it will pass out. So now. What, uh, what is on top of the fair value? What is uh, after fair value? What is next? The gain or loss. Ah, okay. Gain or loss, which is the difference between the balance carried down and the fair value. Which is coming to two fifty six thousand. And so I want your attention at this stage. We are saying when you have fair value and balance carried down, then the fair value now becomes the book value. But amortization, amortization is based on the amortized costs, not on fair value. So down there, when you are your workings, you say. Finance cost, finance cost 2023 will be 8% times. We are not going to amortize 2750. We are going to amortize this value. Finance cost is based on the amortized value, not on the market value. So there is contradiction between the two. In the basic accounting, when you have market value and book value, market value supersedes the book value. And that is why we have to bring it down here. But in IFRS 9, finance cost is based on the amortized value, not market value. So the finance cost in 2023 will not be based on this figure. Rather, it will be based on this one here. This is what we could have brought down in the event that there was no fair value. So amortization will be based on this 2494. So you take 2494, that is what you amortize. Give me that figure. That is where the trick in a quarter. Now, that is what I know Labrador the letter she that was students. And you will write for me that note somewhere. You will write for me there finance cost is calculated based on the amortized cost, but not fair value. Very important. Finance cost is calculated on the amortized costs, but not on the fair value. So how much is that? 8% of 2494. What do you get? You are getting Nancy one ninety nine five twenty. So you bring it here one ninety nine five twenty. So give me the balance carried down. This plus this minus the one twenty five. How much do you get?
Good. So that is 28, 40, 28, 24, 5, 20. All right, check the fair value in 2023. Check fair value in 2023. In 2023, fair value is 2.6. So that is a loss because you are reporting a book value of 28, market value is now 2.6. So it's a loss of our one. Have the loss in brackets. Have the loss in brackets of how much? 224, 520. 224, 520. 224, 520. Let's go to 2024. 2024, the balance you will bring down is the 2.6. The fair value is what you bring down as the book value. But now, amortization, amortization of 2024 is going to be subjective, logo, the finance cost. So how you are working outside there? Finance cost 2024. I know somebody, if I may ask, someone will tell me, take 8% of 2824. Based on our previous explanation, that will be okay. But we are not going to take 8% of 2824. Reason being, uh, finance cost should be based on the amortized cost, but not on the fair value. So 28, 24, yes, I agree, it is the amortized cost at the end, but it is an amortized cost based on this fair value, based on this 2750. Remember 2750 was the fair value in year one. So this amortized at 28, 24 is a fair value, is a, is an amortized cost which is based on the, this fair value here. So you you amortize it based on what could have been the amortized cost. So it will be this way: twenty twenty four uh, will be the amortized cost. The true amortized cost in year one was this one here. So it was twenty four ninety four plus the finance cost. Finance cost is this one here, 199,520. It was based, this 199,520 was 8% of this value, which you gave me. So if there was no fair value, it would have been 2494, which would have been brought here. Then we add this one here. So 199,520 minus the 125. So if at all, if at all, if at all there was no fair value, then this amortized cost would have been the 2494, which, which would have been here, plus 8% of that 24, which would have been 199. So the rule is when determining the finance cost, you check what ought to have been the amortized value, not the fair value. So this 2824 is based on the 2750, which is the fair value. We don't want the issue of fair value here when calculating finance cost. We should get the, the amortized cost. So I'm taking 2494 plus this, because 199 is based on 24, not 27. So you take 2494 plus this minus that, take 8%. That was the, my main issue. Otherwise, I connect to Ingine. How much do you get? What do you get? Two or five. 482. You ready? 205. 
If that's okay, then give me the balance at the end. So this plus this minus 125. This question will be repeated sooner or later. So balance card and down to somebody. What do you get? Right, twenty six eighty or eighty two. That is how financial instruments sometimes can be complex. It's better if you have this complex because you need to say now what I twenty six eighty four eighty two fair value twenty twenty four. We were not given. We were not given because that was the last year. So the last year they said. Check the redeemable amount, how they will redeem the amount. Check, check the question. The redeemable amount is assumed to be the market value by that time, the redeemable amount. So 2024, redeemable, redeemable amount, they say, so redeemable amount will be the fair value. It will be the fair value in 2024. What you are redeeming will be assumed to be the market value by then. So the redeemable amount, the examiner said somewhere in the question, the bond will be redeemed at a premium of 149 above the nominal value. Above the nominal value. Nominal value was 2.5. Redeeming at a premium, it means over and above. So you add 149. So whatever they will redeem is the market value by that time. So how much? 2.5 plus 149 should give you 26, 26.49. Yes, that should be 26.49. So that is what you bring here, 26.49. So the book value 2680, redeemable 2649. That is a loss. A loss of how much? Loss of how much? Thirty one four eighty two. Thank you. Thirty one four eighty two loss. Please, any moment when a financial instrument, make sure that the lady concerned. He was worried that you what I let her one day. I don't know how to paste the way it is. So, the concept is of the balance current down and fair value, and more importantly, how to calculate finance costs. Once you appreciate that, you are good to go, nothing else. So let's answer the question. Let's answer the question. The question is on PLL extract and balance sheet extract. So write there, PLL extracts. PLL extracts. They want for 2022, for 2022, 23, 24. Like that. All right, so extra means give us what you can see. You do just give us anything you can see. So blanket was the investor because they purchased the bond. When you are purchasing a bond, it means you are investing. So for income, so you say here income, 
Actually, I was not supposed to use the word finance cost. It is finance income because they are my investors. So finance income, finance income, you pick this column. If they issue, then we talk of finance cost, but they purchased. When you purchase a bond, you have invested. So this is 194, this is 199, this is 205, 482. So you pick this column here. Then on the bond, as the bond was being amortized, we realized gains and also there were some losses on the fair value. So those gains and losses, gain or loss on long-term financial instruments, we take them to other comprehensive, other. We don't take them to P&L. So here you write other, other comprehensive, other comprehensive, other comprehensive. So other comprehensive is the gain stroke loss on fair value. So gain stroke loss on fair value, gain stroke loss on fair value. So year one, we gain 250 feet. Year two, we lost 224, 520. We lost 32, So total comprehensive, you can get your answers there. So write down there, total comprehensive income. So 194 plus this, 199 minus this, this will be a small negative there, then 205 minus 31. Then we are done with the P and L. Then we go to we go to the balance sheet. Allow me to believe that you are done so that I want to believe the same here so that we do the balance sheet. Oh, I hope you are done. So right there, statement of financial position extracts. Statement of financial position extracts. Then have those three years. Statement of financial position extract. Have those three years. Have those three years. So you write your assets. Remember, they purchased. If it was issued, then you talk of a liability. Because when you issue, you are the one borrowing. You will pay. You will pay the interest and even the principal. But if you are purchasing, you are the one investing, so you talk of the assets. So you talk of financial, financial assets at fair value. 
So we recognize the fair value, not the amortized. So if fair value was not there, ladies and gentlemen, come up fair value, you get what? You pick these values here, these ones, the clothing. Those balances carried down are the ones you capture in the balance sheet. But now because fair value is there, then fair value now takes over the, the book value. So you recognize the fair values. So you get 2750, you record 2.6, you record 2.649. That is it. You know this amortization schedule, nobody marks. That is the funny part of it. Nobody marks the, the amortization. What is marked is this because they wanted the extracts. So as you did when you had the chalk and the amortization, you get back because even this one here, you just take the 2.5 plus the the, the 149 premium. You this one on the okay. So of course that will be secure three marks out of out of eight. And also, if things were dangerous, because where the problem is is finance cost for these two years, this one and this one, he battled So ungepata four, but come and buy a sana, ungetoka bure as such. But now because I've shown you, make sure we deliver the concept. They can bring question differently. So the concept I want you to have is between these two, balance carried down and fair value. Once you have the two, then fair value will be the opening balance, but finance cost will not be based on that. It will be based on the, on the amortized costs. Then as years goes by, you work on what if there was no fair value, what would have been the amortized? So what would have been amortized is what you subject to the finance costs. Ivo. Uh, thank you for that. Nobody, nobody will bring any question complex than this for, for financial instruments. That is the farthest we could go, but we are not yet done with the topic. Right for me as our topic, derivatives. Derivatives. Derivatives is more of finance. Ugo kwa FM diu mnafanya derivatives mingi, but bado IS, IFRS 9 on financial instruments always want us to, to, to talk a bit about it. So there is one page note I'm sharing. You can stretch out. Never kunyo amaji, I glance. It will make to discuss. We see what's next. Yeah, I've shared kindly all time. We cannot write them right now. I hope you are writing this now. Because I, when we I give you time to write at my your time. Yeah, I think it's okay. Yeah, I Uh, so allow me to, to read derivatives. They are securities. You know these bonds are securities. So they are securities that derives their fair value from other securities or uses other securities as benchmark in determining their fair value. 
e.g. forward future in a one forward future and a future forward contracts, whichever options it is in. So there are securities in the in the market, stock market that is, they don't have their designated values. Their values are derived, their values are derived from other securities. Uh, just like me and some of you here, which is the truth. So as you a restaurant, you can't get a it means your appetite is derived from what is available in the next table. So you are derivative. So derivative securities are bonds or any other instrument in the stock market which do not have designated fair values. Their fair values depends on the market value of other securities. Actually, not other securities, of other similar securities. They derive their market values from those other securities. Then we have what is called embedded derivatives. It is a provision, a provision in a contract that modifies the cash flow of a contract of a contract by making it dependent on some underlying measures, e.g., an entity may make provision that cash flow from security will depend on interest fluctuation rates. So this one sometimes can be confusing. An examiner can tell you to differentiate between a derivative and an embedded derivative. All of them are derivatives, but a derivative, we have said, they derive their market values from other similar securities in the stock market. But embedded derivative, uh, it's a cash flow, the amount we expect from that security will depend on certain factors, e.g. market interest rates, exchange rates, inflation levels. So if the inflation level goes down, then we can increase the, the, the cash flow, which is expected from that security. So you know the word to embed, it means it is attached to. So their fair value will be with their cash flow, not fair value. The cash flow, which is expected, Will, be, uh, will depend on some external factors. That is an embedded derivative. There are some derivatives which are not embedded. They're just being traded, but it derives its, its market value from other securities, but the cash flow does not depend on other factors. That is a plain derivative. But embedded, apart from getting its market value from other securities, the cash flow which is expected out of it will depend on some factors, mostly the interest, the market interest rates. More of it for those people doing FM, you will learn more about derivatives there, but you don't go to the same way clear to you. Then there is something called hedge, hedge accounting. So before I, I read what is there, hedge is to mitigate. Actually, hedge is a fence, it's like a fence. So in the stock market, and this one was uh, very critical during COVID-19, um, an entity issued a security to the stock market. Now what work you What work you your security, your bond, what work I invest? And during that time, allow me to, though this was not bond, but it was an investment, well, Cyton, you remember the story of Cyton, what happened? Sorry, maybe because some of you were there, but the Maisha, they were really hit during that period. And the reason as to why they were hit, they lacked a hedge. So a hedge is a mitigation. Even, even in campus, people used to say, I don't know the camera who you Most it was for men. Are you hedging? Hedging means do you have a mitigation factor? That is a hedging. So if you have this bond A, I want you to get that properly, you should have another bond B. And the bond B is not for trading. It's not to be issued to the public. In a quarter capitalized, market your cash flow in acquiring invested. So that in case 
bond A, the cash flow from bond A, which is meant to pay to pay those people who invested, is insufficient, then we can come to this account to get enough money to pay for those people who had invested in bond A. So you have this bond, it is trading, but the cash flows are not being paid to. Okay, akuna contracts umeingia na watu wengine iko tu hapo kupata cash flow. Na hiyo pesa inakuwa reinvested. In case bond A fails to pay itself, utachukua hiyo pesa na kupatiane. That is called uh hedging. So what is a hedging accounting? Now we can go back to our notes. A hedge is an instrument. A hedge is an instrument which is meant to offset the adverse fair value or cash flows which may be expected to take place to another instrument during the financial period. Hedge accounting reduces the volatility created by changes in fair value or expected cash flows. Hedge is to mitigate against any expected adverse changes on an instrument. So, Nani um, apa ata Joy na kuona apo chini. Joy, will you unmute? Then read for us September 2021, question 4A. September 2021, question 4A. So for accountants, kujua kuna vitu tunasikia na tunaweza kujifanya tusikiani. Wasichana wanasema ati mimi sasa nataka kuanza kutafuta mubabas. Sasa accountant asiongee hiyo unasema I think it is high time to page. So hedging is umeshaelewa. Accountant asiongee kama mtu wa sales and marketing. Joy I'm waiting for you to read. International Financial Reporting Standard IFRS 9 Ungeza volume kidogo International Financial Reporting Standard IFRS 9 Financial Instruments Recognition and Measurement provides guidance relating to hedging and allows hedge accounting where there is a designated hedging relationship between a hedging instrument and a hedged item Required, citing relevant examples, explain the two main types of hedge and describe the accounting treatment in the financial statements of an entity. Thank you. Thank you. So in that question, the examiner wanted us to, they have said the two main. Otherwise, we have three types of hedges. So how you hedge depends. There are some people who hedge against the adverse changes in market value. There are some people who will hedge against the cash flow. There is a difference between fair value and cash flow. Even you, there is a difference between income and expenditure. So the expected cash flow, how, because we have a market value in 2 million. Like in the the expected cash flow, value what you go upon, would have only at 2.5 for that financial year. The, the outflow you expect to pay because when you are trading on it, like in what So we have two main. We have what is called fair value hedge and a cash flow hedge. on IFRS 9. So back to our notes. Uh, types of hedges, we have fair value hedge. We have a cash flow hedge. Those two are the main. Then we have hedge of net investment in foreign operations. I'll explain it when I come there. So let's go through the three, one by one. Let's start with the fair value hedge. It is a hedge of exposure in fair value changes of a recognized asset or security or liability that is attributable to a particular risk and which 
could affect profit or loss. Hiyo ni story mingi. Venye unaona huyo mwanafunzi ameandika hapo kidogo, it's a uh, it's a, it's a safeguard against fluctuation in fair value. Wewe hata kwa mchele uandike hiyo. Hii ile ni venye tu standard inaongea but you see we cannot comply our right up we cannot say word by word with what the standard is saying. You have to to to, to write what is relevant. So a fair value hedge is a hedge instrument which is meant to safeguard changes in fair value of another instrument. So unakuwa na two instruments in the in the market, one for trading, the other one to safeguard changes in market value. Price ikishuka unachukua hii top up unalipa watu. Isikue wewe uko kwa money market lakini sasa hataweza lipa. All those people unaona wako kwa money market, bills, bonds, debentures and the rest wanakonga na hedges. Though there is no legal restriction, but it's good to have a hedge so that people can develop trust in you. Then we, uh, accounting treatment, you have a chimney, because the examiner said, you explain, then you tell us the accounting treatment. Gain or loss on fair value hedge should be recognized in profit stock loss account. So if there is a, a gain or loss, just take to PRL. That's how we account for them. Then there is a cash flow hedge. It is a hedge to the exposure to variability of cash flows that are attributable to a particular risk associated with a recognized asset or liability. Gain or loss arising from cash flow hedge should be credited to PL, the same with the fair value hedge. Yokizungu ni mingi. It is a safeguard against and expected cash flows. So if you expect that the cash flow will be high, you will not be worried. You just take the money from there to offset the changes in the in the cash flow. So as their names, actually their definition depends on those names. Fair value hedge to safeguard against changes in market value. Cash flow hedge is meant to safeguard against changes in the expected cash. Actually, normally against cash outflows. Hedge of net investment in a foreign operation. This is a type of a hedge whose main objective is to offset a fluctuation in foreign exchange rates and other related foreign exchange risks. Gain or loss on their fair value should be recognized in other comprehensive income. OCI stands for other comprehensive income. Foreign exchange, mostly one another, you the foreign, the other. So why the last one is not the main? Ukiangalea bizuri, the hedge of investment in foreign operation, Okay, before I go there, hedge against investment in foreign operation are those hedges you have to work, to mitigate against the foreign exchange fluctuations. Mm -hmm. Unajua vijana dollar in a chair that level 145, 148, 150, So it becomes very difficult for trading purposes. And there are some people who normally float, they float these bonds in offshore markets. So if you float them in, in, um, in overseas, then you will be highly affected with the foreign exchange fluctuations. So you can have a hedge that in the event, only the contract like the house, the stock market, see how you open again and watch. Even in America, in order to make a fair value cash flow, ama foreign apana, you must designate it as a contract so that they know that any uh, interest rate has gone up and you have a hedge against this sort of pay your pencil. It can do any. No, it, they must be very specific. So the reason as to why the last one, hedge of investment in foreign operation is not considered to be the main. If you check it keenly, there's a manga from critical angle, Missouri, it can fall in either way. Because at the end of the day, you will be quantum um foreign exchange ikishuka. What is the impact? It can impact on the on the cash flow. It can also be on the fair value. So it it goes either way. If you check it deeply, it goes either way because its main purpose is to to mitigate against changes in foreign exchange rates. And foreign exchange rates, of course, will affect the fair value. It can also affect the cash flow. So it can encompass about the 
the, the first two. So the first two are considered to be the main. In the event you are told to give the three, then you have those three. MB, MB down there. In order to qualify for a hedge accounting, in order to qualify for a hedge accounting, the hedging asset, hedging, hedging asset should be highly effective, highly effective, and must meet the following criteria. Must meet the following criteria. Must meet the following criteria. So the criteria, so you come here to Tandika, you must join Vizuri. So Elvis, please can you unmute? Then read for us November 2018, question 1D. November 2018, question 1D. Elvis, you can unmute and read for us that. I hope you are around. Elachi. Elvis. Ngomapata, you're sitting. Can you tell us the page? Time, time, time. I'm trying to compute with the time. I'm trying to compute with time. Page 81. That's a joy. Nikisema usome arakaraka ni to save time. I hope Elvis ataona kwanini michupa kazi yake. Ni time tunajaribu kuangalia. So maybe Joy, you can just read because umesha pata to save on time. With regard to International Public Sector Accounting Standard, APSAS4, the effects of changes in foreign exchange rates explain the accounting treatment of exchange differences arising on translation of both monetary and non-monetary items in the financial statements of a public sector entity. Uh, you need D, well. D. Oh. Uh, that was B. B. Yes, I am B. International Financial Reporting Standard, IFRS 9, Financial Instruments, set out the hedge, sets out the hedge accounting rules, which can only be applied if the criteria for the hedging relationship are met. Required, citing relevant examples, describe the hedge effectiveness requirements. Wow. Oh. So... Uh, for an instrument to qualify to be a hedge, the hedge must be highly effective. What are you up? Um, to tell to lend a beta, which is just an example, to lend a beta, then you know, ladies are highly volatile, so that you and that you to an unprotect. So, uh, imagine mutu mutu na 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 e uku protect anatoshana ivi. Then you have a hedge that in the event we are machine to the hedge just a hedge hedge pia anatoshana ivi. This one is not effective. If this is the hedge, the hedge, then the hedging instrument will be highly effective. The expected cash flows from the hedging instrument should be more to cover the hedge instrument. Another back in Guinea. So, uh, in other words, the examiner is asking the conditions to be satisfied by an instrument to qualify to be a hedging instrument. So, I think this one should be right for me. Now, the other space to connect the other one page. So, right there. November 2018, question 1D. November 2018, question 1D. Criteria, criteria, criteria for hedge effectiveness. Criteria for hedge effectiveness. Criteria for hedge effectiveness. Criteria for age effectiveness. 
Number one. Number one, criteria. There must be economic relationship. There must be economic relationship. There must be economic relationship between the hedged item, between the hedged item. There must be economic relationship between the hedged item and the hedging instruments and the hedging instruments. Maybe, let me just explain them because there are three, let me just explain them as we go. Economic relationship means if, if the hedge, you know, hedging instrument is the one which is helping. So if the head and the if the hedge is a bond, it is always required that the hedging should always be a bond. Um ukona, ukona matatu, Nairobi. Of course, it is on a loan. So you are trying to hedge that in case. In case kitu imefanyika, bank awata awata sema ho lab lab gari meenda meka matatu meka kwa garage for almost one man. You should have a, another vehicle to page. So uh, if it is a vehicle, you should have it also with a vehicle. Siya tuko na ati where how do you hedge against this expected cash flow on this cash outflow on this vehicle on the loan which you are paying? Ati ni kona maiskeli ngapi bili. Zinapiga wanabebanga watu na kila siku zinaletanga kama 80 shilling. By scale, cannot hedge against motor vehicle. Kama ni motor vehicle hedge against it with another one. And, and by extension, the one hedging should generate more cash flow than this one here. So economic relationship means uh, they should be of actually similar nature. Number two, number two, the effects the effect of the credit twists. The effect of the credit twists. The effect of the credit twists should not dominate. The effect of the credit twists should not dominate. Should not dominate the expected economic benefits. The effect of the credit twists should not dominate, should not dominate the expected economic benefits, the expected economic benefits from the hedged instrument, from the hedged instrument, from the hedged instrument. What it means, you know, there is the credit risks. Credit risks can be liquidity, risks, among others. So is it where the expected risk on that instrument, if the one you are using to hit, even the expected risk is more than the amount which you are expecting. It should not be the case. It should be over and above. The last one, the hedge ratio. The hedge, the hedge ratio, the hedge ratio of the hedging relationship, the hedge ratio of the hedging relationship, of the hedging relationship, of the hedging relationship should be equivalent, should be equivalent, should be equivalent to the expected economic benefits should be equivalent to the expected economic benefits or more. Equivalent to the expected economic benefits or more. Full stop. What, but actually it should not be 
equivalent. It should be more. Actually, the recommended is two is to one. So if the one for trading, you expect to generate all the, the cash flow you are paying per year is one million, then the hedging should at least generate two million. That's the, the hedge relationship. It should be one is to two. The one hedging should be should be able to generate twice the cash flow of the one which is being hedged against. Being equivalent is risky because anything can happen, but the, the beauty, ES stock at zero, you know it is risky when this one is zero, then this one was also one million. So you can take all this to pay this. But what if this one take Umbek it over with 0 0.8, name it was zero. But it can't be zero. That's why being equivalent is also okay. But ideally, the recommend one is to two. This one should be able to cover this fully and still remain with others. So whoever wants in brief, what you should know is the issue in brief. There should be economic benefits. The risks should not be higher than the expected amount. Then the hedge ratio should be equivalent or more in brief. But there is a computation to wrap it up. September 2021, question four, Aeroman two. Open that question. September 2021, question four, A Roman two. September 2021, question 4A, Roman 2. Very quiet. Let's look for it. Which page? I think me are almost there. Yeah, me are already there. When you page 51, and please check page 51. Oh, I don't know. We we are checked part one of that question. So in financial instruments, see topic I could do you it is not a one one hour, one day affair. It is very concrete that uh, you need to be very keen with it. And by extension, one of these small topics is the you know, Jangaruguantiani. You know, we human beings, we are quite funny. We always like to be told what we want to hear. Yeah? But on what we figure about financial reporting, but I was getting group account in the figure pass. I put your heart beat Nico. Father, you look group that work on our story now. Yes, they carry group carries maximum of 40 marks. So that you're 16 and over for you begin. So you begin a double double if you can understand them, and you get out of the 60, you can be able to get 40. Then group in those two questions because they are true. You group more than ten, you get ten. We will share with you. Can book on a sixty percent. So these small topics are very critical, very. Ah, uh, so allow me. Part one you had already read for me, and imagine that part one the two main types was six months. So imagine you get the six. Na iro man two yele tunayenda unora biya ni six months, so twelve. So it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a critical area which you need to master proper. It says, Bahati Limited entered into a hedge in order to protect its future cash inflows relating to a recognized financial asset held at amortized cost. The cash flow hedge was formally documented on 1st July 2020 
and was considered highly effective. So that's a cash flow hedge. At the inception of the hedge, the value of the hedging instrument was zero. any value. So why, why am I tending to, to think that this is a, an embedded, huh? not embedded per se, but it is derivative. Because come up, you know, you should have a value. Ata ukipeleka ngombe kwa soko. Unapeleka ngombe kusema hii ngombe yangu. Na uh, user 20,000. It means it has a value. Lakini kama we umetoka na ngombe unasema tukifika hapo. Watu tunitangalia ngombe kama hii. Iyo vali ya iyo ingini itakua kama hii. Then that is a derivative. It means its price is going to depend on similar cows in the market. So this one of zero, this one seems to be derivative. Anyway, not our concern. So at the inception, the value was of the hedging instrument was zero. But by the year end of 30th June 2021, a gain of shillings 22,750 had been made when measured at fair value. The corresponding loss in respect of the future cash flows held item amounted to 22 million in fair value terms. So the one which is being paid against has lost, has lost 22 million in fair value. While the one which is hedging has gained, they have gained 22, 750. So required, show the relevant journal entries to account, to account for the above transaction for the year ended 30th June 2021 and explain whether the cash flow hedge is effective or not effective. So journal entries, journal entries. So in financial reporting, any moment someone tells you to give journals, that Mr. Person or Mrs. Person is only telling you to tell us which account to debit and which account to credit, period. Generalizing means debiting and crediting. So you tell me DR, you tell me CR. So let's reduce that to thousands. You know, zero in any time. So you will debit with again, there was a gain of 22,750. So what I told was hedging. You remove it from the hedging to hedge because hedging is not to side you. So you debit the financial, financial assets hedged, hedged instruments. Hedge instrument, you debit it with that gain of the hedging. So hedging in a kujera idea in Guinea. So you debit that cash flow to the asset, which is 22, 750. 22, 750. Then there was a loss. There was a loss of 22. So the 22, you credit the same same financial asset. The financial asset, the hedge still, the hedge instrument, you reduce the value with the 22. There was a loss of 22. So the hedge instrument lost 22. Then there was again the other side of 22,750, which is coming to, to help up. So the difference, the net, the net difference is again, is again of 750. The other one gained by uh, gained 22,750, this one lost 22,000. So the entire amount will come here 
but there will be a surplus, surplus of 750. So the surplus of 750 will be credited to other comprehensive, to other comprehensive income, other comprehensive income, the other comprehensive income with the gain. So the gain you record there. Then you can give a narration being the recognition, recognition of fair value, fair value, fair value changes. Narration, you can write whatever makes you happy. It is not standardized to make anything which, which you feel is, is, is necessary. Then by extension, the examiner is saying, you explain whether the hedge is effective or not. Yes, the hedge is effective. We can give two defense. Yes, we can give two defense. Defense number one, there is economic relationship. This is, uh, all of them actually were, were, are they bonds or what are they? There is economic relationship and also the hedge ratio meets the criteria or the threshold because this one here uh, the the one which is helping has gained 22750 which was uh sufficient to cover this one here so you can give two defense so you say there the hedging instrument the hedging instrument is highly effective the hedging instrument is highly effective since the hedge ratio since the hedge ratio meets meets the required threshold meets the required threshold meets the required threshold. So what is the required threshold? They should be equivalent or more. So this one is even more, giving us 750 is more than this one here. So it meets the required threshold. Full stop, continuation. Yes, sure. Your continuation to take a to in story. Where what happened? I wanted to bring the issue of economic relationship. There is, but the one which is the main, I think what the examiner was highly checking, you again is quite obvious. They are all financial assets. The one which is focusing on is this and this, the, the ratio, which is quite okay. Full stop. That is the end. I'm not seeing what those people can bring in IFRS 9, which can challenge you. Though IFRS 9, the scope of that thing is very wide. It's one of the standards which is being feared. But you just revise with what I've given you. That is quite sufficient for you to pass that. My intention is to kick off with the group accounting or come out upon a glass apple. November. So for the remaining period, I still want to clear clear these other small small topics, and therefore, I'm not bound to to introduce in our next class. In fact, I need to share it with you the those notes so that to the Munalandika we come for the discussion. Correct. IFRS number sixteen. IFRS 16 will be our next topic. That is it as 19 for public sector. So our next topic is IFRS 16 from IPSAS number 13. Accounting 
accounting or leases. So I'll share the notes in your next chapter in our next class. Why are, are you people traveling? Why is something just telling me? Continue this one communication, John. Something is just telling me that it, it is workable. Though I, I'll be having some parties, you can see a party as reading around. But it, when it comes to, to plans, I can always stop those, those things to come. The, can I teach you tomorrow uh, from around 6 to 9 in the evening? Can it work for us? I want to see the majority. So, if you are here, what do I say? No. No, I don't to say yes. Then, you are going with the selected few. Pirango seems to be okay. Immaculate is okay. Jacinta? There is probability of having LM. Mwende will be attending some burial calling. Two more. I want to make a decision very fast. But now decision can even be made because what we're even in Wasama, there is probability. Probability of having LM. Kevin, LM might happen. I uh, saw so them. Allow me not to invade your uh, the schedule. So, so let's just meet on our Saturday, Asubui. However, remember, Saturday we agreed. Our class rep will remind us. Class starts from 5.30 on Saturday, 5.30 p.m. to 8 a.m. Also, Sunday we meet. So I'm sharing with you these notes. Then I'll see how far we go on Saturday. Otherwise, do have a nice day. Make sure we summer. Please read these small topics very fast. Group in a puja by our Chagaisha Bishop of Baka Musahao. In fact, I'll come here and say, Did we do a FRS 9 or financial instrument? No, maybe another class. So make sure we're not summer mapema. You know, the Kikuja in a part of the YouTube Mesoma, Sunday book in theater. So kindly, kindly. I'm working on, I'm only remaining with two questions on last sitting theory. I normally give those theory solutions. So I'm sharing that big handout of those theories. If not today, then tomorrow, let's just. Have a nice day.